Welcome into the Bassmaster Studios, and here we have another Know the Pro segment. Today we bring in John Cox, a bass fishing veteran, but a newcomer on the Bassmaster Elite Series. John, how are you? Oh man, awesome, awesome. I wanted to start you off with a softball. Tell me where you're from and what your home lake is. Okay, I'm from DeBerry, Florida. Uh, I've lived here my whole life, and my home lake, it would have to be the St. John's River, uh, Harris Chain, or Toho. I'm all within you know 30 minutes of all three. So, John, how long would you say you've been fishing professionally, whether it's on the Elite Series or the FLW Tour? How long have you been fishing as a pro? Um, you know, I really decided to make the jump in 2010. Uh, you know, it was just I, I, me and my buddy Keith, we got lucky. We, we won a big chunk of money, and uh, he was like, man, he's like, don't give me my half. He's like, put it all in and go in as a, as a pro, and that's, that's kind of when it all started happening. <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh, so a decade of being a pro fisherman uh, under your belt so far, and it's been great. Five major wins um, at the professional level, and you've won some Bassmaster Opens as well. One thing that's interesting about John Cox is you are the tin man. You run the aluminum boat, you've kind of <laughs> pioneered that, and now it's catching on with a lot of guys. What started that? Why did you decide to do that when you, when you first did it? I mean, honestly, I, I was just flat broke. I was just so broke, could not afford a fiberglass boat. You know, I'd go in the bank and they'd be like, what, you know, what do you do for work? And I was like, well, I'm a professional fisherman. And uh, they laugh at you and they're like, no, we can't give you a loan, you know? So uh, that's kind of where it all started. I mean, I, I bought a, uh, a a used Crestliner. Well, me and Keith did. We bought a used Crestliner at a used uh, card lot, truck lot. And uh, I ended up winning the, you know, my third FLW tour event out of it on the Red River, you know, taking it through a pipe. And uh, I just, it's kind of just when it started at all. And then it just, uh, you know, went from, there, went from there, I guess. So would John Cox prefer to never have uh, maybe graphs on his boat ever again? Or do you, are you coming around to using your electronics some now? Oh gosh, you know, I, I used to just not even put them on, you know, and uh, and I and then I put them on and started using the charts and stuff. But uh, man, I got them on there, and I and I love them. They work great. But I just it's so uh, it's so frustrating to me when I can see them on the graph and I can't catch them, and it just drives me nuts. And I I spend a lot of uh, too much time on fish that aren't biting. Uh, so sometimes I just I have them and I won't even turn them on. So for John Cox, we know obviously you've won a, a couple pro level events on specific techniques, but if you had to throw all the tackle out of your boat and you could only fish with one thing the rest of your life, what would you fish with? Uh, it would have to be a Berkeley Powerbait Max Scent General. I mean, it's just, it's carried me so many of those days where I can't catch them on anything else. Uh, I'm able to catch them on them. And I mean, that's just, uh, you know, most of my wins, it somehow uh, was a factor in the tournament one of the days. and. Uh, Man, I just tell you, it's an awesome bait. There's so many things you can do with it, and uh, yeah, it's by far that's that's the one I would have. So you have a unique story. You're not you're not too old, but you've been fishing for a, a decade as a pro. <laughs> but who was your fishing hero? Who got you into the sport of fishing, or at least lit that fire for you to pursue it like you have? Oh man, you know, uh, you know, my dad took me fishing when I was was younger. You know. Um, one of his friends gave me tons of fishing equipment like I think when I was in like third or fourth grade and uh, man that's just what I did I rode my bike wherever I could and just and just learned uh, you know as much as I could and then uh, and then you know as time went on uh, I, I one of the guys around here that used to just dominate Joe Kramer he kind of took me and Keith under his wing and showed us uh, way too much you know to like I mean we were just mind blown how much he showed us and uh, Man, it just it just uh, it, it just uh, progressed to just this is awesome. Like, yeah, man, I don't I don't even. It's just unbelievable, you know. So like I don't believe it when I wake up every morning that you know I get to go fishing every day. <laughs> well, John Cox, for those who don't know it, you actually have two incomes flowing through. You have uh, yeah. what you make as a professional fisherman, and you also have John Cox's private pond and associates, where you charge <laughs> people to come catch giant fish by hand. Tell me how that started. How you? <laughs> how you took all these fish in your pond and have uh, kind of groomed them to eat out of your hand. They eat cake, they eat pizza, they eat bluegill. Like that's, it's, a, it's <laughs> I got to see it firsthand. It's pretty unique. Yeah, I mean, it, it is crazy. I mean, the it, the main thing is I spend way too much time out there with them. So like, I mean, I'm down there feeding them all the time and uh, I really like to just, uh, you know, see their behaviors and see how they act differently. And I mean, I, I've lived here, uh, you know, I think for eight or nine years. So like I've seen a lot of the same fish, 
um i mean some of them are i mean they're just like you know they're like your your pet dog or cat or whatever you know and uh man it's just it's it, it just uh it's so cool and you can just come down there and i mean when someone wants to catch their pb i'm like okay well, i'll take you out for 10 minutes and let them get it <laughs> so besides the pond in your backyard and the lakes right there uh on the saint john's river and what connect to there what would you say your favorite lake in the world is Oh gosh, that's a hard one. I, I mean, I should say Chick because you know it's been so good to me over the years. But uh, man, I'm, I'm telling you, I really love going up north. I love uh, catching smallmouth. Uh, you know, it might be why I might never win a smallmouth tournament, but man, it's just so much fun. So just any of those places, you know, St. Lawrence, Champlain, uh, Erie, St. Clair. You know, I just love going there. So I'm going to ask a, a similar question, but what's a lake that you would love to go to that have that you haven't been to yet? Maybe a bucket list lake. Oh man, I, gosh, I've been everywhere. I haven't been out west. I haven't been to any of the California lakes. Uh, they look really neat. I uh, just would, would hate to make that drive out there. I mean, them guys that drive three days, I just like, I don't, you know, my, I complain about, you know, 10, 12 hours, but uh, those three day drives, I don't know how those guys do it, but, um, or any like, you know, Falcon. I was supposed to, my very first uh, pro tournament, I was supposed to go to Falcon and uh, it got canceled and uh, we had to go to Beaver Lake instead. So it was, you know, I was always like, I'd really like to go to Falcon one of these days. Those those are vastly different lakes, especially <laughs> yeah, probably in, the, in that February, March time <laughs> period. But uh, right. for John Cox, uh, you started out your Elite Series career at the St. John's River, right in your backyard, probably one you were really <laughs> excited for, but it didn't start out the way you'd like with, with the weather postponements and things like that, and then it getting shortened to three days and the fishing there, it was all in flux with all the different changing conditions. So for John Cox, what would you like to get back from that event? If you could go back in hindsight and redo something, what was something that you think you messed up on? Oh man, you know, I, I you know, being the home water, I mean, I, I tried to move around a lot and uh, man, I'm telling you, like I, I would try to do it over again, but I'm, I mean, I weighed five fish in two days and got 33rd place. And it could have been so much worse. I mean, it it was tough, you know. I mean, it, one of the days I weighed in a 9.15, I think that was it, you know. So it was, um, I mean, I'll take it and go to the next one. And, uh, but man, I'm St. John's just an awesome place. And, uh, you know, we'll hit it again right one of these times. So, John, uh, ICAST is right around the corner. It's, it's normally this, you know, the middle of July, right before we make our northern swing. For you, uh, you have a lot of different sponsors and, and baits and equipment that comes out. What is one thing from ICAST that you're really looking forward to putting into place the second half of the Elite Series season? Oh man, I just got these uh, Berkeley Powerbait Frogs. Um, they're going to, you guys will, should be able to get them soon. And man, I am just super excited about these. I got to test them the other day and was killing them on it. We got a new frog hook that goes in them. And you do not miss any of them on this thing. I mean, it is just... Uh, it's just, it's crazy how good it is. So for you, uh, you're you're excited to get the second half of the season underway. We know that it's been a tough 2020 on adjustments and figuring out what we're going to do. But what does John Cox expect from himself in the last half of the season? Uh, a push to make the classic, a push to win an event, or, or to even be Angler of the Year? Oh man, I'm telling you, just just to uh, you know, the main goal is to go out there and just have a good tournament. You know, try to make the right calls, catch fish. Um, you know, uh, making the classic is huge. That's that's the main goal. You don't want to be at the classic. Uh, you know, we're gonna go to Ray Roberts. Uh, I've, I've been there one other time for a Texas Fest. Uh, really like that place, full of big fish. That's that's gonna be a really exciting tournament. So that's that's got to be the goal to make it there. And if we somehow stumble on them and win one, that'd be nice too. Well, last question. I, I, I just teed that one up as the last question, but this is the official last question. When John Cox hooks up his boat to head to the next Elite Series event. How many miles down the road are you going to go until you stop to get one of your patented slushies or slurpees that you like to call them? How, how long is it? I mean, is it the first oh, mile or I, are you going to get out of Florida? Well, I quit. I quit drinking them. Oh, no. I quit. I did. I quit. I completely quit drinking slurpees. But normally it would be about five minutes down the road and I'd have to pull over and get one. But uh, yeah, I kind of quit drinking them. I, I realized I had a problem with them. <laughs> I was drinking too many. But. I don't know what to think yeah. of John Cox with long hair, not drinking I, know. I don't know. I don't know what to, I, I am completely betrayed by this know the pros. I, I, I'm just, I'm a disaster lately. <laughs> well, there's John Cox. Hey, thank you for taking the time to do this know the pros mm -hmm. with us. I hope the fans at home get a little bit of insight about uh, the Florida Pro. We're super excited to have you on the Elite Series, and uh, we're excited to, to continue the 2020 season. It'll be, it'll be different fishing in the fall, but I know that you're one that's probably excited to just be able to fish in general.
Oh yeah, hundred percent. And I just I appreciate it, Ronnie, and everybody. Uh, you know, everybody at Bass is just awesome, and uh, I can't wait to get things going when we get up north there. Well, there's John Cox. This was Know the Pros. Look for him on the Bassmaster Elite Series out on the water very soon.